again, as I said earlier, we are just thrilled and, and pleased to be with you all tonight. Um, it is not too often that I get to be the preacher. Usually, um, I'm the singer and I follow Dad and, and um, he's the preacher, but I thank the Lord for this privilege. Um, it's an honor um, and a huge, huge privilege to be able to deliver the Word of God. And I just pray tonight that the Lord would help me um, to deliver it the right way, to give you tonight what He's given me, and I hope that it blesses you and encourages you. Um, before we get started tonight, would you pray with me? Amen. Father, we give you praise. We give you praise, amen. Father, we thank you for your presence that we felt here tonight, Lord. We thank you, God, that people are changed, that hearts are changed, that lives are changed, Lord, in that presence, that freedom was here tonight, God, and it is here now, Lord, and we receive it in the name of Jesus, Lord. I ask that you would anoint me to speak tonight, Father, that you would anoint your people to receive and to hear, God, what you would have to say, Lord. I ask that you would touch my mind, that you would touch my lips tonight, Lord, that I would deliver it in the way that you've given it to me, Lord, and I would do it no injustice, Father, and we just thank you again for this opportunity to come together to fellowship and to get into your word, and we give you all the praise and all the glory tonight, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, his presence has been here tonight, amen, so what Brother Swagger says, at church all the time, if we left right now, we have enough of the presence of God to last us all night, all day, all week, all month. Um, I love being in the presence of God. Amen. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it in the world. Would you go with me tonight to the book of Luke? The book of Luke. And we're going to be in chapter 12. Chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, and we're going to start in verse 35. We're going to read all the way through um, verse 40. Verse 35 through verse 40. When you there, say amen. Yes. Luke chapter 12, verse 35 through verse 40. Let's read tonight. It says this, Let your loins be girded about, and your lights be burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Yes. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also. For the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. I'm going to read verse 40 again. Be ye therefore ready also. For the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. And tonight I want to minister to you a message simply entitled, Are You Ready? Are You Ready? And I would hope and pray tonight that every person in this room, every person in this building knows Jesus Christ and we're living for him and we're walking victoriously um, through this Christian life the way that uh, he desires us to do. But I know that the Lord put this on my heart tonight for a reason. And, and I don't know if maybe there's someone here who hasn't accepted the Lord or someone in here who's struggling or someone who's found themselves just idle when it comes to their faith or their work for the Lord. And um, tonight I just want to encourage you and ask you to truly examine your heart and examine your life and be honest with yourself tonight. Be honest with yes. the Lord tonight. Are you truly ready? Are you truly ready tonight? I'm afraid 
that we live in a world right now that claims to be ready and is nowhere near ready for Christ to return. I'm afraid that we live in a world that's full of churches right now that claim to be ready and are not ready for Christ to return. I pray tonight that we could see truly what's in our hearts, that, that the Lord would really reveal this to us the way that he has to me. And it was convicting when I began to read it and realize um, he's not just talking about someone not being saved. He's talking about people who are saved, people who have accepted the Lord but are standing idle and not watching and not waiting and not taking it seriously that any moment the trump of God could sound. And my question to you tonight is, what is he going to find you doing? What is he going to find you doing? Where is he going to find you? Where is your faith at is really what I should say. Where is he going to find you in your walk with the Lord and your faith and your heart? What is he going to find? If you were to come back this moment, what would he find? Where would he find you? In what state, in what spiritual state would he find you? Tonight, this is a parable that Jesus told. And this parable is paralleled again in, in Matthew, in the book of Matthew. And it's told a little differently there. Um, where he uses, Jesus uses the story of Noah to give an example. And he says, you know, in Noah's day... God had spoken to Noah and told him, without a doubt, there was going to be a flood. And the earth was going to be destroyed. And he told Noah to build an ark and him and his family to get into that ark. And Noah warned the people. Noah believed what God said and he warned the people. But what did they do? They mocked. They ignored him. They drank. The Bible says they drank and were merry and they... They were getting married and they were just having a good old time. Partying it up. While Noah is warning them a flood is coming. You're going to be destroyed. And there was a way out. There was a way out. And they ignored. And they pushed it aside. And even worse, they, they mocked. They made fun of the word of God. The word that God had spoken to Noah. And the floods came and they were destroyed because they weren't ready when they could have been ready. See, I don't think we have any excuse tonight if God were to come back, if Jesus were to come back tonight, I don't think we could find ourselves with an excuse to not be ready. Just a simple fact that we heard and we ignored. Or we heard and we went about our way and, and we did what we wanted to do. See, there's so many people that know that Jesus Christ is returning and they believe it. But they're not ready. Their hearts aren't ready. And they're not about the Father's business, as Jesus would say when he was asked as a child. Uh, he said, I'm about my Father's business. Are you about your Father's business tonight? And I'm not preaching salvation by works because that's not how we're saved. But when we are saved and when we truly know Christ, then there is something inside of us that cannot let this world not know Christ. We cannot just sit aside, sit to the side and grow idle. See, there's something in me when I turn on the television and I turn on the news and I see these people all over just defying the word of God, just blatantly defying the word of God. And I know I'm, I'm sitting there thinking the days are just getting closer and closer and closer to seeing Jesus, but they are getting further and further and further away because too many people are not found doing their father's business. Or they're not watching, they're not waiting, they're claiming Christ, they're professing Christ, but they're watching the world around them die and go to hell every single day. Amen. And I hope that's not us tonight. And I'm preaching to myself first because there's so many times we find ourselves in, in a complacent place in our hearts and in our lives. We get comfortable. Even when you're in ministry, even when you're involved in ministry, sometimes that's blinding because you think, hey, I'm doing good things. 
I'm preaching to people. I'm, I'm singing to people. I'm ministering to people. But it, am I truly ready? Has that become just a job to me? Has it become just words to me? And it, it's a question to you tonight. Has your faith in what you believe, is it just words to you or is it real to you? Is it real to the point where you would give your life trying to let other people know that they don't have to die and go to hell. They don't have to live this way. Yes. And again, I'm, I'm preaching to myself because I want to be ready. Amen. That's a convicting thought or question for me to ask myself, Grace, when, you, when the Lord comes back, what is He going to find you doing? It's convicting. And here again, Jesus is giving this parable and he tells of a story of a servant, <clears throat> excuse me, in his master's house. And the servant is waiting for the master to return. And it says here, let your loins be girded about and your lights be burning. When it talks about your loins being girded, it's kind of an odd statement. But really what this was, in those days, the men and the women really would wear long tunics. That was their everyday dress. They would wear them down to the ground. But it didn't give them much freedom to move or to, to do much of anything. It was just, it was binding. So what the men would do in preparation for battle or in preparation for hard labor, they would lift it up and tie it around their waist where they usually would wear a, a belt or a gird or what a girdle is what they called it. And they lift up that tunic and they tie it into that belt like a pair of shorts. Is basically what it looked like. And at that point, they were given freedom to be able to work and to be able to move and to be able to go to battle. They had more freedom to do hard labor. And that's the idea here is, is Jesus says, let your loins be girded. We need to be ready to battle. All right. We need to be ready. We need to be prepared because it's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be our favorite thing in the world. But it is necessary that we be ready, that we be prepared that we are ready to battle, that we are working when the master returns, yes. that we're working. And so that's what this is talking about here. The idea is don't be found idle. When the master returns, I, I don't know about you, but I don't want my boss finding me doing nothing. If I was at work and she walked into my classroom, I'm a teacher at FCA, and I was sitting there doing nothing or, or kicked back in my chair watching a show or something on my computer or, you know, I wasn't working, I'd be in some big trouble. I'd lose my job. And that's what he's saying here. Don't let him return and find you not doing the job that you should be doing. And again, not preaching works. I'm not preaching do, do, do. But there should be a response to that fire that burns in our hearts when Jesus is alive and real inside of us. And we want the world to know. Amen. What will he find us doing? It says, let your lights be burning. And the, the servant at the house waiting for the master return would hang the lights outside the door. Because he didn't know what time the master was going to get home. It could be day, it could be night. And the idea here is that the house was ready. See, the, the man was, he's saying, gird up your loins. The man was ready. And the house needs to be ready. The lights were hanging outside. Jesus said, let your lights be burning. Don't let that light go out. We are the light of the world. We are the only light that some people will ever see. And are we ready? Are we ready to battle? Are we ready to do that work? Will he find us about the Father's business? Verse 36 says, And you yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. A wedding in those days was not like a wedding today. They would have weddings that lasted anywhere from seven days on, sometimes more than seven days. And so the idea here is that the servant at the house waiting at home had no idea when the master was coming back. 
All he knew is that the house better be clean, everything better be ready, I better be at the door, watching and waiting for the master to return so he can open the door immediately. And that word jumped out to me while going through this immediately. That means, that gives me the idea that he's literally standing at that door, looking out the window. He's not somewhere on the other side of the house. I mean, he is aware that his master is returning. He is overly aware that his master is returning. And he's looking out the window and he's cleaning the house and he's fixing everything up. And he's looking out the window and he's checking the door because he doesn't want to miss his master's return. He doesn't want to miss his master's return. See, there's so many people that are, are maybe, see, and I, I had this thought too. Maybe I'm taking out of context a little bit. But there's a lot of people cleaning up the house and not checking the window for the master. There's a lot of people doing and doing and doing and working and working and working, but they're not watching and they're not waiting. They think that working is going to get them eternity when by not waiting and watching and being aware that easy, they miss it. So here is a, the picture of, of a, a servant waiting for his master to return. And he's eagerly waiting and anxious, anxiously watching. Because at that first knock, he wants to open that door immediately. No hesitation. He wants to be ready. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Is he going to find you watching? Is he going to find you waiting? When Jesus returns, are we watching? Are we waiting? Are we ready? Are we truly, truly ready tonight? Because I believe with all my heart we are closer Amen. than we've ever been. I know that for a fact. Any day, any hour, any second, and oh my goodness, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. And I want to be about my father's business when he returns. I want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I don't want to barely make it in. I don't want to barely make it in. I want him to say, well done. My good and faithful servant. Blessed are those servants. Blessed are the servants who are watching. And you know what that blessing is? He says here, Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. There is coming a day where I'm going to sit down. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm going to sit down and he's going to serve me. I'm going to sit down at that marriage supper of the Lamb. I'm going to sit down beside King Jesus. As soon as my feet strike Zion, I'm going to lay down my heavy burden, put on my robe in glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to shout and tell the glad story. I'm going to sit down beside King Jesus. I'm going to tell him how I made it over. There's coming a day very, very soon I'll sit down with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that's my blessing tonight. Blessed are those servants who one day are going to sit down with King Jesus at the marriage supper of the Lamb where he's going to be hosting and he's going to be serving. And we get to sit for all eternity at the feet of Jesus, at the feet of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I want to be able to say that I did everything that I could, to tell every person that I could, that they could be there too. Soon and very, very soon, that day is coming. Closer and closer every day, every minute, every hour. And there's so many that aren't ready. There's so many that aren't ready. But so much that I could do to change that. I want to be ready. 
Are you ready tonight? And I'm going to keep asking that question because I want you to think about your life. Are you ready? Are you going to be at that marriage supper? Will I see you across the table? Yes. Are we going to talk? Are we going to walk and talk with each other in heaven? Will I see you again there? If I never see you again after tonight, will I see you there? Yes. Sitting with Jesus. Verse 38, and if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. This simply refers to time that they would stand out and watch. The second watch would be 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The third was 9 to 12. And, and they would wait and they would watch for the coming of the master. And again, we don't know. No specific time is given, but we do know to watch the signs of the times. And by the signs of the times, it won't be very long. It won't be very long. And we don't know what hour, but we are told this, and this is one thing I want you to get tonight, is while we're walking this Christian walk and we're living this life and, and we're doing everything that we can to lead people to Christ and, and to share the gospel, there is an enemy that is waiting for any chance that he can find for that servant that's tending to that house to get distracted. The picture here that I get in my mind is is a thief standing off in the distance, peering into the windows, watching this house closely, watching the servant who's inside doing the work and, and watching the door and looking out the window. And he's waiting for that servant to get a little tired, yeah. a little tired of waiting, a little tired of watching. Maybe he's going to sit down on the couch for a minute and just take a break. Because it's too hard and, and they're tired and they're worn out because it's not always easy. It's not always enjoyable. Sometimes it's a lot of work. But here is that thief looking into this house from a distance, just hiding in the bushes somewhere, waiting for that servant to sit down for a minute and to stop watching just for a minute. Because that is his opportunity to get into the house. Amen. And I hope you're getting what I'm saying tonight. There is a true devil, a thief, who's waiting to catch you distracted, who's waiting to catch you with your faith just a little off, a little not right, a little moment of bitterness, a little moment of anger that maybe we've let creep into our hearts and creep into our lives. And there he is waiting for that distraction, for that trial to come along that allows him just a little door, a little foot in the door, into our minds and into our hearts. And from what he says, what Jesus says here in the scripture in verse 39, he says, And this know that if the good men of the house, and that's the person that's dwelling in the house, if he would have known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched. So here we see on the other side of it a different outcome. This man didn't watch. And what happened? The thief found an opportunity to walk in and it says that his house was broken through. His house was broken into and the thief destroyed his home. There is a devil who is waiting. There is a thief who is waiting and just lurking in the darkness, waiting for us to get distracted, waiting for us to forget the importance of being ready, of watching and waiting. And there's a reason why Jesus told this story. Because our Christian walk isn't always just about believing and saying, yes, I know Jesus, and yes, I believe in Jesus. Are we living that? 
Are we living that? Are we walking that? Are we talking that? Do we live for Jesus every single day truly? Because it's one thing to say, and I think it's become a little too thrown around, that I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. Are we truly believing? Are we truly watching? Do we truly believe that he's going to return? Do we really take that seriously? Because one day he is. But in this process, while we're waiting, we get to deal with the thief. We get to deal with the thief. And 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be sober, be vigilant. Because why? Your adversary... The devil is a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Be sober, be vigilant. And again, this brings up the paralleled scripture in Matthew where he talks about the people um, that Noah preached to. They were not sober. They were not vigilant. They didn't care. They were not watching. They, they didn't care at all what Noah said. They were doing their own thing. They were partying it up. They were having a good time. And when the flood came, they were destroyed. Satan is waiting for that opportunity in this process. Again, that is not always easy. It's not always the simplest process. But he is waiting for that opportunity to sneak in and he wants to devour you. He's not playing games. He wants to devour you. He wants to turn that tiny little distraction, that tiny little problem, that trial that you're going through, he wants to turn that into your destruction completely. And if we're not careful, he can do that. If we're not properly preparing ourselves, if we're not properly placing our faith in Christ, if we're not properly believing, He has a an entrance into that door, even if it's just a small one, to do some damage. Yeah. And possibly permanent damage. Amen. He's seeking who He can devour. Not who He can play games with. Who He can devour. Amen. When you're going through something difficult, and I've had to remind myself of this over and over and over again, because through every trial I've seen, see God and Satan, they have a different intended outcome in every trial that I go through. God on one hand wants to see me victorious and he wants me to come out as Job said on the other side as gold. While Satan desires to use that same trial for the destruction of my faith, and I get to choose who wins that battle. I get to choose. Is this going to allow my faith to grow? Is this going to allow me to grow in the Lord? Or is this going to allow me to be destroyed? And I'm telling you, this applies to every single thing that you will go through. Satan has an intended purpose in it. And God has an opposite intended purpose in it. And it's up to us, again, who wins that battle. I have to remind myself over and over again when I come across difficult situations that Satan is trying to destroy me. He wants to get at the very core of my faith. He wants you to believe a lie. I've been teaching um, at FCA a girls Bible class and we've been going through Brother Swaggart's book, The Great Women of the Bible. And I've loved it. It's been awesome. Um, but I taught a little bit on this it's a little off topic, but we'll go there. Um, see, Eve in the garden, a lot of people think her first mistake was biting into that fruit. But really her first mistake was listening to the serpent and responding to what he said to her. See, his intended purpose was to destroy her. God had other intended purposes. God, I know, desired to see her overcome that. But Satan used it ultimately for the destruction of man. And she had a choice. To listen to the enemy. 
or to ignore him. Satan, everything that he comes against us with is, this, is with this one purpose, and that is for us to believe a lie. He wants to destroy us. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's what he wants. And there is a true thief. But I'm thankful tonight that he doesn't have to win. Amen. He doesn't have to win. If we're watching and we're waiting and we're ready for the coming of Christ, he doesn't have to win. Amen. Verse 40 says, be ye therefore ready also. And that's really my message tonight is, are you ready? Be ye therefore ready also. You get to choose. You get to decide. Are you ready to meet the Lord tonight? And if he comes, if he returns, what does he find you doing? For the Son of Man, he cometh at an hour when you think not. We don't know when he's coming. But we know he's coming soon. Yes. He's coming soon. Yes. And again, preaching to myself, are, are we ready? Are we ready for his coming? Are we ready for his return? Or is our church ready? Is our person, are we ready? And tonight is singing musicians return. I'm going to close simply with that question. Are you ready? Amen. And I hope that you are. I hope that we can leave tonight and everybody say truly in their heart of hearts they know that they know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That they believe in Him with all of their heart. And that they are about the Father's business. But tonight if there happens to be that chance that somebody in here doesn't know Jesus yet or hasn't made that commitment yet, I want to give that opportunity tonight. Because just like that, you can be ready. Amen. With one choice, one decision, it's your choice and you can be ready tonight. Because whether or not you like it, whether or not you believe it, He's coming back. Amen. Whether or not you want to profess it or whatever you want to say, He's coming back because his word tells me he's coming back. And by the signs of the times, I know that it could be any day. And his return is upon us. And are you ready tonight?